Today, I'm sharing budget-friendly craft room storage ideas that I use in my craft room. I've got a playlist for you with all the original videos linked down below in the description box, as well as linked at the end of this video. So let's get started. So I have got these two large bookcases. Bookcases are a great place and can house a lot of material. I got these secondhand. Secondhand is a great way to get something that's very inexpensive and affordable for storage in your craft room. I have got it full with different containers. This is an old briefcase that was gifted to us as well as this old lunch kit. This was my dad's actually, and it's full of soldering tools. And this here is a file folder case. That was my dad's as well, makes excellent storage. I utilize sturdy boxes. I also have these really old suitcases that we inherited from my husband's Oma. I have got different fabrics stored in these and they make excellent storage. Again, that's unique and affordable. This here is a caddy that I got from the dollar store. I covered it with some rope, just hot gluing it on just to give it a bit of character. I've got tin cans inside here that houses my different pens and pencils. And I also have these other large tins here covered in fabric and other assorted materials, such as this moss container right here. So for this project, all you need is a a sheet of some moss and if you don't want to do that you can of course use some fabric I am also going to be using some reindeer moss here and I'm this particular sheet of moss has got a sticky back so uh, it doesn't completely wrap my tin can there will be a little bit of a gap in between but I'm going to be filling that in so I'm going to just start off by marking how much of the um, or how tall of the moss sheet that I need. And then I'm going to just use my steel ruler and my pencil, and then I'm gonna cut that out with my scissors. You can cut this out using a craft knife, craft knife as well. So I don't know how well the stickiness of this uh, foam, sorry, moss sheet is. So I'm going to be using a combination of this, the adhesive on the sheet as well as some hot glue. That way here I know it's going to stick. So I'm just going to add just a little bit of hot glue there and then slowly remove the backing off of the moss sheet and stick it to my tin can. And then you'll see here I do have that little bit of a gap. So it's an easy fix. I'm just going to cut off a little piece that will fit inside that section. I do measure it off so I can get my fit as close as possible and then again I will be using some hot glue and adhering that to the tin can. I think we can all agree that tin cans make excellent storage and it's free and you can decorate them any way you'd like. Let me know some of the different ways that you have decorated tin cans for some different storage ideas. I would love to know because I have seen so many different ideas, but I think it's great hearing from you, the viewer, uh, on your suggestions and it helps all of us. So here you go. I'm just filling in that little gap and there still were some seams so that's where I went and used some of my preserved reindeer moss and I covered up that seam. Uh, that's just me being particular. I, I didn't kind of like the way that looked so I'm just going to go in now and add just a little bit of the moss and just adding tiny bits of the hot glue along that and then you won't even notice that seam there. I'm just going in now and just trimming off any of the excess in there. You can't even tell that the seam is there on that one side. So now you can just go ahead and if you have any spaces that are uh, kind of bare, you can add a little bit of moss, and go, uh, which I did there. And then you can just fill this up with anything that you like. I always keep markers in mind, but this would be great for some paint brushes. You can even add some scraps. Here is another idea. I took some scrap material and I cut down some strips that were just varied in size. I'd say that maybe they were about an inch wide. I just crumpled up the strips so that the edges would fray a little bit. I wanted that rough raw edge. And then I've got my tin can again and I'm taking those strips and I'm going to wrap my can with this 
this is a really, really good way to get rid of those scrap fabrics that we all have in our stash. That's one thing I absolutely love to do is utilize those scrap fabrics. If you haven't already, you'll definitely want to subscribe and turn on the bell notification because I have got some more fabric scrap ideas coming your way, as well as some paper scrap ideas that I thought we could do together. And if you have any ideas and suggestions of what you'd like to see, please drop those down in the comments section. It really helps me out. And you guys have lots of amazing ideas. So I'm just going to continue to glue those strips. I overlapped them and added a bit of hot glue where they overlap until it is completely covered. And then um, I do end up trimming off any of the excess fabric that might be overhanging on the bottom because then it's going to sit on my cupboard properly. Um, and then it's ready to go. You can see here I've got some pencil crayons. This is an old a night table set that I had. My husband's Opa had built those. I no longer use them in my craft room. I do use them as another piece, but on top of there, I used to house all my sewing notions. These were some thrifted finds that I got from the thrift store and I did over in a video, oh, I think it was a couple of years ago now. And I will have the original videos again for you down in the description box as well as at the end of this video in a playlist. But I'm gonna show you how I did these up in this video as well. This is a picnic basket and it was so, so dirty, but I thought it would make excellent storage. So I just cleaned it up. The best I could and I wasn't sure if washing it with some water was a good idea but it turns out thanks to all you letting me know that actually it is a good idea it helps to freshen it up and revive the rattan so I did that allowed it to dry and I'm telling you it made a huge difference Picnic baskets actually make excellent storage I have got three of them this little one as well as two larger ones that I use so I'm just going to be measuring out the size of my little picnic basket here because I wanted to create a divider and I'm going to try to do all three of these pieces kind of the same. Well, I shouldn't say the same, but I'm going to try to tie them all together with some sticky back uh, shelf liner that I got from the dollar store. So I'm just measuring out the divider that I'm, I'm making here for my basket and I'm using some thinner cardboard. And what I decided to do was kind of create like a little bit of a tray that's going to fit on the inside of my basket. So you're gonna be seeing me just doing some different measuring here. It all depends on what your uh, basket size is, de will determine what size of piece you need to make. So you can see how I folded up each side and it left a larger panel on the in middle part. Now I've got my contact paper and I'm just cutting out a piece that's going to be slightly bigger than my cardboard piece. Again, the original video will be linked down uh, below as well as at the end in the playlist for you. I go into more detail on how I did this particular piece. So I'm just going to be covering the back side now. I'm just going a little bit quickly here on how I put this together for you, but you kind of get the idea of what I've done here. You're just covering a piece of cardboard and then creating like a little tray that's going to fit inside your basket by folding up two of the edges here, and then you're going to fit it inside your basket. And then to keep it in place, I am going to be using some hot glue and it, this would be removable. I did test that out. If there is any residual hot glue, you can just heat it up and remove it that way. So now all you have to do is fill it up with your notions and it's ready for some storage. So here is a wood box. I love to get wood boxes from the thrift store. Now this did have like a varnish on it, so I needed to sand it down. And this had two little magnets that helped keep the lid closed. I am gonna be using a mix of some 
cream paint, some green paint, as well as some gesso. Now I didn't have quite the right color green in my stash of paints. So I'm going to just create my own color. I wanted a lighter green. The gesso is actually going to help the paint to adhere to that shiny surface. Even though I did sand it down, I still wanted to make sure that that paint was going to stick. You could use chalk paint instead if you'd like. That would definitely be an excellent option. Uh, but this will work as well. Now I'm just going to be using a paint roller to apply it. And it did bubble on me. And some of you had said that sometimes those foam rollers like the one I'm using that's what happens so I will definitely have to search out a different foam roller to see if I get better application uh, it did create a slight texture but honestly I was okay with that okay so the piece is all painted and all dry now I'm going to add some of that same contact paper to the top of the box. I think that it is such a beautiful way to tie all your different craft room storage items together to make it look more cohesive for your craft room. Once you have this piece cut down to size and you can apply it, of course, it depends on what your container is like. It'll determine how big of a piece you need. Now, at this point, I should have added a little bit of trim around the edge of this contact paper because it actually did end up lifting a bit, but I did seal it up with some varnish or some clear matte sealer that will help hold that paint into place and help prevent chipping. Fill it up with any of the sewing notions or whatever supplies you have, and then you can see how beautiful this looks together. This is going to tie in well with two more pieces that I am going to be showing you how I revitalize them similar techniques to what I have already showed you with this little wood box but it'll show you how you can take some thrift store finds that are always budget friendly stuff that you inherit or stuff that you even find at garage sales or for free somewhere just how you can turn them into something beautiful for your craft room or for any storage within your home this was a homemade box that I had seen at the thrift store and I'm going to take all of the hinges off and I, I took the chain off as well that'll just make it a lot easier for me to paint so again I'm using my same paint that I made using the craft paint as well as the gesso uh, again like I said I did not have any chalk paint so I figured I would try to make my own chalk paint so to speak <laughs> using the gesso and I have to say just so you know this actually held up really really well I am so happy with all the pieces I still use them in my craft room today so I'm just gonna go ahead and paint all the surfaces I did sand them all and I'm going to just be sealing it up all afterwards so what kind of unique pieces do you use for storage in your craft room? I'm really, really curious because that is one thing I really, really enjoy searching for is craft room storage. So if you've got some really cool suggestions on what you use in craft, your craft room, let me know and I'll be on the hunt for those. So I'm gonna be using the contact paper to line the inside of the lid and I'm just cutting it again down to size and then I'll be putting it into place. Before I remove the sticky back protector, I'm going to just make sure it fits and then I can still trim it off if I need to. So now I'm just going to start to remove the backing and then put it into place. It did overhang slightly on the one side, but that was really easy for me to trim off as you see me doing there. So now I'm just going to be taking a piece of cardboard and I'm going to be measuring the inside of this box. I didn't want to try to remove the liner that was in the bottom of this box. I wasn't sure what the condition of this was going to be. And I knew I wanted to line this with this uh, backing or sorry, with this shelf liner. So I thought this would be the easiest way for me to do that. And it, that way here too, I will get a really good fit because I'm just putting this on the cardboard and I can trim down the cardboard any way that I need to, to make sure that it fits inside the box. So I'm just gonna cover this up and then I'm gonna see if it fits. If it doesn't, I'll cut it down as needed. And you can see right here, it was a little bit too tight. I mismeasure by a little, little bit, not very much. So I'm just gonna trim that off just by a little. 
So now it fits really well. We're gonna press that into place and now I'm gonna cover the outside and I was being very careful not to cover up those screw holes there because I needed to make sure that I can access those so I can put the hinges back on. So now I'm just gonna measure this out and then adhere it to the outside of the wood box. So I've got it all nice and covered. Now it's time to put all the hardware back on. So I needed to use a skewer to poke a hole where I had the chain and I'm gonna put that back into place. And then I'm also going to, oh, I did, sorry, I forgot to mention, I did seal it up with some matte spray or some varnish, either one will work for you. And then I am going to now use a different chain. It is not as chunky. I got this chain from Dollar Tree. It was one from one of their plant hangers. And I'm just gonna cut it down to size, the length that was the original chain. And then I'm gonna use that in place of that really chunky chain. I like the black color better. The other one was actually kind of a blue tint. I'm also gonna be putting the hinges back into place as you see me doing right here. And then it's gonna be all ready to go for storage. So I'm gonna put my sewing notions in here. This is what I use all these pieces for, is storage for all my sewing supplies. Not that I'm an avid sewer, but I do have some stuff and I needed better storage for all of that. I had it just crammed into a plastic container and it just was not working. I love these pieces. They're some of my most favorite in my craft room. So I was at the thrift store and I found these amazing wood boxes. They are actually whiskey boxes. They're wood, they've got a sliding door, or sorry, a sliding lid, and they make excellent storage. So I've got some paper tool, paper crafting tools in here, but I've got two more that I recently thrifted that I can't wait to utilize. They are currently empty. I also found this index card holder, another amazing find. I don't see these very often at the thrift store, but when I do, I grab them without hesitation. They are amazing for storage and it's got a great lid. Wood crates are really nice and other index cards. I also have a crate that's got like some, uh, it had some salmon in it. I'll show you that one here. It has a sliding lid as well. I was actually surprised at how sturdy this box was. And then I also found this beautiful tray and it can just sit on the counter or you can hang this one on, uh, on the wall. So I've got just an assortment of different things that are sitting in here. I've got like a little tray that's sitting there housing some trinkets and whatnot. And then I also have some vases that sit in here and it has a bunch of different twigs that I use for crafting. It is a beautiful tray. It is by the artist Kelly Ray Roberts. I was shocked that I found it at the thrift store. This is another shocking find that I got from the thrift store and it is a library card holder. Uh, you, again, not something you see at the thrift stores very often, but when I saw it, I definitely had to get it. Love it so much. It is a really good piece for the storage or craft room. Dressers, dressers you can get online on Facebook Marketplace at garage sales. Again, another really, really good piece to have for your craft room. I also got more wood boxes and I also use plastic containers as well. This is a bin that I got from Dollar Tree and I decorated the outside and I'll show you how I did that right here. So I got this placemat 
from Dollar Tree. I don't know if they still have them or not, but you can get placemats elsewhere as well. I removed the tab off the front of this uh, basket and then I am just using the bottom piece uh, to measure out how much of the placemat I need to cut out so then I can cover the front of the square basket that goes into the cube shelving. I am using some diluted Mod Podge to secure all the stitching in place that's on the placemat, but it really depends on the type of placemat you're using, whether or not you need to do this step. So I do because of course I need to be able to cut that. Right here I'm using uh, the tab that I cut off. I'm using that as a pull tab for the top of this storage piece. It'll be easier to remove then. So now that the glue is all dry on my mat, I can now glue it into place before I cut it. I decided that I would cut it down once it was in place. So I'm just going to start to use my hot glue and then I'm gonna slowly roll the mat onto the bin. Um, I am going to just do it in sections until I have it fully covered and then I am going to cut it down to the size that I need. I had made several of these for my cube storage and I love them. They're still working well. The stitching had come apart on one of the storage bins, but it's an easy fix. And uh, yeah, like I said, I still use them all the time. I love the way it looks. It has a very organic and natural look, which is a lot of what I wanted in my craft room. So now if you want, you can go ahead and add just a little bit more glue there. That will help hold the stitching in place. But if you don't have any stitching, then you won't have to worry about that step. So I'm just going to cut off any of the excess. I'm using some wire cutters to snip all of that off, push any of the strands down into place as needed, and then you can use this for storage in your cube shelving. So I was able to get a decorative cube storage basket for just a few dollars in comparison to 15 to 20 dollars that I have seen these baskets go for at other stores. Found another piece at the thrift store. I fell in love with it. It's the set of drawers I use for storage, storing different glues, as well as some rubber bands. I store rubber bands in the very top drawer, which you won't be seeing in this particular shot, but that's what I've got. And you can see I've got them all labeled. So this was originally a spice drawer and you can see it's really dark brown and there were spices in the front. I coated this with some warm white craft paint. Now you could use chalk paint. I didn't bother. I thought this wood was porous enough that it would soak in and stay in place. Plus I am going to end up sealing it up here at the end. I'll show you that what I use. So I'm just going to give this two to three coats of the paint, allow it to dry well. So you can see how good that looks, loving that, but I'm going to now distress it. So I'm just using some sandpaper and I'm going to just sand off the edges and that will bring that dark color out from underneath. I really, really like that look. It looks very, very rustic. <laughs> I'm now going to also use some distressing stain to really age it. I wanted that really old look. I used a little bit of water on the rag just to help make uh, allow the, the stain to go just a little bit further. And that just helps to bring out just more of that distressed look. So I took some measurements of the glass panel that's on the front of the drawers and I'm cutting down some patterned paper and I'm adhering it to the glass using some tacky glue, clear tacky glue. And I'm surprised like this is working really well still. I had made this a few years ago. I just applied the glue to the glass, put the paper in place, squeegeed it out. I also decided to use some twine on the inside of this, the panel using some hot glue. I think that's what helped to help hold this into place as well. So again, I'm just using some jute twine and pressing that into place into the glue. And I am really, really happy with how that looks. 
This has been a great storage piece that I found at the thrift store. So if you see something like this, definitely grab it. It is a really, really good piece to have in your craft room and it was so affordable. I can't remember how much it was offhand, but definitely check your thrift stores out as well as garage sales and such. So that drawer sits on top of my cube storage along with another tin can that I decorated. I also find tins very, very useful for the craft room and I think they look beautiful, those vintage tins. I also like to get some ceramic containers. This is one that I found um, at, at the thrift store and I didn't want that really bright orange color. Even though I love orange, that was just too bright for my room. So I'm making a mixture of some craft paint along with some baking soda. This is such a cool technique. I've seen lots of people doing it now. It is a great substitute for chalk paint. It has excellent coverage. It stays really, really well, especially on something such as this. This is like a ceramic dish and sometimes paint doesn't always stick that well to it, but this did so well. So um, I did probably, I don't know, a quarter to a half a cup of paint to a couple tablespoons of the baking soda. You're just going to have to kind of play around until you get the right consistency and you don't want it too runny, uh, but you don't want it too thick either. So you can see how easy it is for me to apply this and I'm getting excellent coverage. I did have to go over it a couple of times just to help to smooth it out because I didn't like the way the brush strokes were showing. And so I allowed it to dry the first layer to dry first and now I am going to go over it again to help smooth out some of those brush strokes as well as fill in any of those spots that I had missed. So you can see how well I had smoothed it out. It kind of has a bit like of a concrete look to it. I think it's really cool. So I did the bottom, allowed it to dry well, and then you can use it for storage. I keep just little pieces of that, like little knickknacks that I've got laying around. I think I actually got some fabric beads that are in there right now. But this makes for such a fun and unique piece for your craft room for storage. So for another tin can idea, I absolutely love to go foraging. A lot of you already know that, but for those of you who may be new here, that is definitely something that I do regularly. I had foraged this piece of birch bark. Now, I had recently had somebody go and assume that I strip bark off of trees. I would never, ever, ever recommend stripping bark off of trees. I forage my birch bark off of the ground when I go out into the forest. I've got plenty of videos showing me how I go foraging. So I will have those linked down in the video description box for you as well. And I'll try to include one video in the playlist for you too, which again will be at the end of this video. So for this particular tin can, I am going around and just hot gluing strips and pieces of the birch bark. I'm overlapping some of them. I'm trying to create a very natural looking piece. I don't want it to look like that I just went and glued pieces on. I wanted it to look like a tube of birch bark that's wrapped around this tin can. You can actually forage two full tubes of birch bark. I have done that several times. The, bur the wood on the inside uh, just rots out and you're left with a hollow piece of bark that's fully intact. It's actually really, really cool to find that. Uh, but I also wanted to show you how you can just take strips and pieces to create that same look. So this is a set of drawers that I bought for my kids, oh, 20 years ago, and I got it for five bucks from a yard sale, and I'm just using it in my craft room now. I think repurposing other pieces of furniture from your house that you no longer need to utilize in other rooms is a great 
way to save money. This is an old cabinet that was my husband's Oma's that uh, we received when she had passed. I use photo boxes that I got for cheap from Michael's and these are magazine holders that I got from Dollar Tree, another cheap option for storage. I love to use vintage jars to house my beads. That's another really, really affordable way. You can use any jars. Now this piece, I am going to insert the original tutorial on how I created this for you. Again, it is one of my favorite pieces and one of my most popular pieces that I have made. A lot of people love this suggestion. So I'm gonna include the, again, the original clip for you right here on how I made this piece. I found this drawer and it had a little bit of damage. I only paid $3 for it and I believe it was a storage drawer for VHS tapes. So I knew this would be a great piece of storage for our craft room, so I decided to refinish it. So I'm gonna start off by removing the handle and then I'm going to be removing all those slats that are on the inside. Now, there was a lot of glue residue left behind, so I ended up having to use a bit of Goo Gone, and I picked it off best I could, and it did all come off. Now, there was some damage left behind, but that all that damage is actually just vinyl. So I just continued to clean this place piece up, it was quite dusty on the inside, surprisingly, but I just, I really like this piece. I knew it would be wonderful for some storage in the craft room. I'm giving this piece a really good sanding and then I'm using a damp cloth to wipe away the dust. So I'm trying to use up some stuff in my craft room and I had these large bottles of paint, but there was not much left in each bottle. So I just scored it into a container. These are just craft paints and this is in like a warm cream color. And I knew this would not have very good adhesion. So I decided to add some gesso into it. Gesso is a primer that artists use on their substrate. And I knew that this would work well to mix in with my craft paint to give it better adhesion. So it's about two parts craft paint to a one part gesso. This gesso is white. I just picked it up from Michaels. It's a nice smooth consistency. It's Artist Loft brand and and then I just continued to mix it until I figured I had enough to paint my project. So I'm just using a foam roller brush to apply the paint. And I'm, as you can see, I just got an ice cream lid as my palette. Now, as I started to roll this on, I discovered that there was clumps of paint in this. My paint was old, I admit it but I really just wanna to try to use up some of my supplies that are in my stash this year. So I'm like, well, I'm just gonna go for it. I have a trick to get rid of those little, um, little rough spots here in a bit. So I added two to three coats of the paint and I allowed it to dry well in between. And I give a coat on each side as well as I went in a little bit into the um, cubby where the drawer would go. So here I am working on the drawer. Again, this front little piece here, the panel, it is the only part that's wood. The rest is just covered in a vinyl. So I'm just painting this front panel of my drawer. Again, I give it three coats of paint and allow it to dry well. So here you can see those little lumps of paint and I just used a sanding block to remove those and they came right off. So I was so happy. All right, so now it's time to cover up the ugly mess that is that brown wood grain vinyl. I picked up this beautiful black and white floral vinyl from Dollar Tree. This is actually shelf liner. Now, I haven't worked with shelf liner a whole lot, so I wasn't exactly sure how to go about applying this. So I just did the best I could. So I decided to start off by covering the sides 
and then going down onto the inside, covering the bottom and again on the other side. Now, I should have done it differently. I realized that after, but I just went with it and I just measured out the amount I needed and then cut it down to size. So I had the side I need, but it kept on rolling up on me. So I back rolled it on itself so it stopped rolling. And now I am going to start to apply my vinyl onto this drawer. So I did find it a little tricky, but I knew that with this pattern, you wouldn't really be able to see these the flaws that I may have created along the way. So I am just slowly peeling back the backing of the vinyl and then I'm pressing it into place along the way. I ended up finding that using a straight edge helped me to apply this a little bit easier rather than just using my fingers. Uh, you could also use your tool from your Cricut Maker or um, Cricut machine. Uh, just use whatever you have on hand. So I'm just going to continue to apply this vinyl until I come to the other side. So I did have an, a little bit of excess at the end, so I'm just using a sharp utility knife and I'm just going to cut right along the edge for a nice clean finish. All right, so now you can see here, I'm covering the back of the drawer. Now, you're not going to see this part of the drawer, but I wanted there to be a cohesive look all the way through. So I went ahead and covered that part up because you just never know if it ends up getting pulled right out. <laughs> anyway, so I just again cut a piece down to size and I applied that. And you'll see here in a bit where I kind of messed up and I should have applied my vinyl differently, but it is what it is. And I'm actually quite pleased with how it turned out. Uh, besides the fact that there were a few flaws around, along the way. So if you have any tips on how to apply this, feel free to leave those in the comment section below. So I have to say, I think it's looking pretty good, but these corners were missed. So I'm just going in and adding a little bit, trimming as needed so it fits and covers up that corner. So I do that for both outside corners and then I also had a little bit showing there on the inside corner so I just used some gesso to cover that up. I put the drawer into place and now I'm working on the handle. So I had been working on another project and I had made a green paint mixture so I just used that paint to paint out my handle and then I put that into place by just reusing this. Actually no, I had to get some new screws because I discovered one of the original screws was broken off. So I just went into my stash of screws and I reapplied the handle. So I store a ribbon and trim in here now, but in my craft room, I actually leave the top part of it clear because then I can dry things as on there as well as put my computer on there so I can attach my laser cutting machine to it. And it is a great workspace as well. So another one of my favorite pieces to use for storage in the craft room are these iris cases that you can get from Michael's. I believe they're about five, six dollars each. They are very sturdy. They are very versatile for storage in your craft room. I have made little craft arts and craft kits that you can use uh, when you go traveling. But I also use them in my craft room to store some Cricut supplies on the bottom shelf of a bookcase, as well as my scrapbook paper, which is their intended use. I really like these containers. 
Another great option to store stuff are these sewing baskets. This is one that I inherited for, again from my husband's Oma. Now I'm using mine to store just a few art supplies so I can have a little arts and crafts kits upstairs, but you can put anything in these. I found this file folder holder at the thrift store and I had originally done this up for uh, Christmas, but then I decided that I'd use it in my craft room so I can put some magazines for some inspiration in my craft room. It's sitting on top of this dresser that I inherited from my parents. My dad had made it for when my parents were first married. I love it. Next to that, I've got a fabric file folder holder that you hang on the wall. I got it on clearance from Walmart and I house my some of my florals there. And then I also have a container, a coffee tin that I've wrapped in twigs, holds some florals as well. Here's an overlook of my craft tables. I have a wood crate that sits on the top of the desk here and I've got different tools. I also have some different containers that I use to hold my paint brushes. So I've got one that is a utensil container that to dry utensils and I also have a tin here that I covered in rocks. So really think outside of the box on how you can use all these different things that are very affordable and unique for your craft room. This is an overlook of how my craft room looks. I love it. It is such a beautiful place to be able to craft. So check out this playlist for all the original videos along with some other inspiration for your craft room. Let me know what your favorite thing is to use in your craft room and we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.